Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. It was another interesting weekend at the box office. Kung Fu Panda 4 opened in theaters both domestically and in many, but not all, international markets. Dune Part 2 did quite well during its second sophomore weekend at the box office, and it got an international boost. And then there's Madam Web, which continues to slide into obscurity as its box office earnings drop even more. But before proceeding, I'd like to ask everyone to please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and please press the bell to receive notifications. Thanks! First, I'll do a quick recap of this weekend's top 5 movies at the domestic box office. Kung Fu Panda 4 came in first place in this weekend's domestic box office, earning an initial $58.3 million. It also earned $22.2 million internationally for a global gross opening weekend box office total of $80.5 million. Dune Part 2 dropped into a close second place, earning another $46 million domestically, which was only a 44.2% drop from its opening weekend. And in this day and age, it's rare to see movies have a second weekend drop that's less than 50%, let alone be less than 45%. Internationally, the movie earned another $113.5 million to bring its international box office total up to $210.5 million. And that $113.5 million was a 17.1% increase over its opening weekend international box office, thanks to the movie opening in China this weekend, as I had talked about in a video that I had released last week. Globally, the movie earned another $189 million to bring its current global box office total up to $367.5 million. The low-budget thriller Imaginary also opened this weekend and came in third place, earning $10 million domestically, but doesn't open internationally for another two weeks. The faith-based movie Cabrini opened in fourth place, earning $7.6 million domestically, but has no appreciable international box office that's worth reporting yet. And in fifth place was the biopic Bob Marley One Love in its fourth weekend at the box office, where it earned another $4.1 million domestically to bring its current domestic box office total up to $89.3 million. And when combined with its current $71.2 million in international box office earnings, the movie's current global gross box office total is $160.5 million. So with its $70 million production budget, which, when multiplied by 2.5 to yield a mid-range estimated break-even point of $175 million, to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, as well as the additional costs of marketing the movie and other miscellaneous costs that the studio pays above and beyond the production budget, the movie will probably break even in the coming weeks. Going back to Kung Fu Panda 4, this is the fourth movie in a franchise that has a franchise average weekly drop of only 28.52%, which is incredibly low, and its standard deviation is only 0.49%. So in order for me to project how well Kung Fu Panda 4 might do domestically, I decided to multiply that standard deviation by 10 so that I could create a broader possible range of average weekly drops from 23.66% to 33.38%. And with that, I can project that the final domestic box office earnings for Kung Fu Panda 4 may range from $174.5 million at the low end, $203.9 million at the mid-range, and $244.5 million at the upper end. So Kung Fu Panda 4 could conceivably break even just on its domestic box office alone. Due to its significantly lower production budget of only $85 million, as compared with its three predecessors, whose average production budget is $140 million. And that's because when I multiply that $85 million production budget by 2.5, I get a mid-range estimated break-even point of only $212.5 million. And the movie is earning money outside of the U.S., but hasn't yet opened in all international locations, which have somewhat staggered openings over the coming weeks. 
So just based on the movie's current very high domestic share of 72.4%, due to it only having opened in some international locations this weekend, the movie's current projections for final global gross box office revenue range from $241.1 million at the low end, $281.7 million at the mid-range, and $337.7 million at the upper end. And this is a lower range than it should be, but will go up higher as it opens in more countries in the coming weeks, which includes China in two weeks. So Kung Fu Panda 4 will break even thanks to its very low production budget. Now, going back to Dune Part 2, using the same range of possible average weekly drops from 32.86% to 42.86% as I had used in last week's projections, my revised projections for the movie's final domestic box office earnings now range from $256.4 million at the low end, $279.3 million at the mid-range, and $309 million at the upper end. This is an overall higher projected final domestic box office range than what I projected last week, thanks to the movie having such a low weekly drop in box office of only 9.68% due to how well the movie also did during the weekdays. And since the movie is now also playing in theaters in China as of this weekend, its international box office did get a good boost, as I had mentioned earlier in the video. And that had the effect of lowering the movie's domestic share from last week's 46.22% to its current value of 42.73%. And while that may not seem like much, when combined with the higher final domestic box office projections, the revised final global gross box office projections for Dune Part 2 now range from $600 million at the low end, $653.7 million at the mid-range, and $723.3 million at the upper end. And that's a much higher range overall that now very strongly suggests that Dune Part 2 is most definitely going to break even, since its estimated break-even point ranges from $475 million to $570 million, which is calculated by multiplying its $190 million production budget by 2.5 and 3.0, respectively. And that brings us to our final movie update for this video, which is none other than Madam Web. Currently in its fourth weekend at the box office and coming in seventh place this weekend, domestically the movie only earned another $1.1 million over the weekend, plus another $1.1 million during the week, to bring its current domestic box office total up to $42.6 million. Internationally, the movie earned another $3.4 million to bring its current international box office total up to $54 million. So globally, the movie earned another $5.6 million to bring its current global gross box office total up to $96.6 million. Thus, it still hasn't reached $100 million globally yet, but probably will within the next couple of weeks. Using a range of possible average weekly drops from 24.07 to 44.21%, which are one standard deviation above and below the average weekly drop of 34.14% for Sony's and Columbia Pictures' previous 16 Marvel movies, I can project that the final domestic box office for Madam Web will likely be somewhere between $45.4 million at the low end, $46.9 million at the mid-range, and $49.5 million at the upper end. So it's beginning to look like Madam Web won't break $50 million at the domestic box office, which means that it's very likely not going to earn as much as the $51.8 million that 2012's Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance earned domestically, as represented by the green horizontal line in the chart, meaning that Madam Web is more than likely going to become the lowest grossing Marvel movie domestically of all time for Sony and Columbia Pictures. In terms of its global gross box office, Madam Web now has a domestic share of 44.11%, which is nearly the same as last week and is well within the 31.04 to 49.72% range, that's one standard deviation above and below the 40.38% average domestic share for Sony and Columbia Pictures Marvel movies. And using that current domestic share, I can project that the movie's final global gross box office values will probably range from $103 million at the low end, $106.3 million at the mid-range, and $112.1 million at the upper end, which is a lower range than last week's projections. 
And this drop further illustrates that Madam Web is going to become the lowest grossing Marvel movie globally for Sony and Columbia Pictures of all time, because that projected range is far below the $149.2 million that Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance earned globally back in 2012, which doesn't take inflation into account. So just as Disney's recently released female-led movie The Marvels became the lowest grossing movie of all time for the MCU and its 33 movies, the female-led Madam Web is earning the same fate for Sony and Columbia Pictures and their 17 Marvel movies. Given the movie's $100 million production budget, when multiplied by 2.5 and 3.0, yields an estimated break-even point range of $250 million to $300 million. And Madam Web is clearly not going to earn anywhere near that. In fact, the movie currently stands to lose somewhere between $137.9 million to $197 million in global gross box office revenue, which, when divided by two to account for the 50% of gross box office ticket sales that movie theaters keep for themselves, means that Sony and Columbia Pictures are probably going to lose somewhere on the order of $68.9 million to $98.5 million. Thus, Madam Web is definitely one of 2024's biggest losers at the box office. While Madam Web epitomizes the saying, Go Woke, Go Broke, Warner Brothers Discovery's sci-fi movie Dune Part 2 and DreamWorks animated movie Kung Fu Panda 4 are both most likely going to break even. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.